It's time for a special edition of Ask Ellen. Tonight, Terry asks, is there a connection between pollution during weekday rush hour and rainy or snowy weekends? I love this question, especially because this past winter, we really did see a lot of storminess and snowiness, especially on the weekends. And that's not always typical for us here in West Michigan, but it was pretty noticeable just with the jet stream this past winter. But I love the way that this person's mind is working. And I am not an air quality expert, but luckily we have some air quality experts that are here locally, like Jim Haywood. He's a senior meteorologist with Eagle. And I asked Jim, help, because you should always go to an expert when you're asking for some sort of specific uh, question like air quality. So Jim was very helpful and I said, have you noticed any patterns or changes? So this is so interesting. He said that years ago they would notice that during weekdays there was more ozone produced and this was due to more traffic, more industry in general. However, over the years, because we've seen some industry changes in uh, basically pollutant modification and bringing some of the pollutants down in both cars and factories. Now we don't see any huge ozone changes between weekdays and weekends. So the weekly change we used to see pollutant wise isn't as noticeable. So I asked about daily trends as well. He said that in urban areas like Detroit, they actually will see exhaust eat away ozone in the morning because of the morning commute. But then in the afternoon, that same substance reforms back into ozone with heat. So they can see a daily fluctuation. What about the COVID shutdown? Did that have any impacts? He said, well, we thought that we would see some, but locally we didn't see any huge trends in ozone changes. He said the wildfire smoke that happened this past year is going to be deeply studied, but we don't have any big studies out now. So in terms of how pollutants actually impact the weather, we don't have too many local variations, but in general, we do have some national studies. For example, it suppresses shallow cloud cover precipitation, but deep thunderstorm action is still yet to be studied. So great question. I'm probably gonna dive into it deeper, uh, especially later on, but I just love some of these connections that we're starting to see. Super interesting too. Yeah. Well, if you have a question you'd like to ask Ellen, you can send it to the7 at woodtv.com.